Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collecting. Uh, today what I'm talking about is a beginner's toolkit. Uh, somebody asked me, said, why don't you do a video on somebody who is a beginner watch collector and some tools that you think would be useful to have. So that's what I'm doing today. Now the first kind of thing that I would get would be a loop and they're basically two levels that I would get and I'm basing this recommendation on what a uh, one of the courses I took recommended and that's one about 4x and another one about 10x don't if, if you get one with a really high power one uh, it's not it may not do you as much good as one of the lower power ones if you wear glasses uh like i do uh there are, there are other things that you can you can get as well and uh here's one of the this is an inexpensive um little thing you just clip onto your glasses and i don't know it was about five or six bucks on amazon something like that now the ones i en ended up getting <laughs> i had to wait about six months for these are uh, a Swiss made one and they they clamp onto your glasses uh, really well and you have to get a left-handed or right-handed since I'm left on just about everything uh, I got the left-handed one and these are about a hundred bucks that's they're pretty expensive <laughs> so I mean if you but they hang on really well and they're um, and they're very and they're, it, you get a good lens with it but I think for for the most part if you if you have glasses and stuff these work pretty well. I mean, just for, you know, taking a look at something really quick. Another thing um, that a lot of people overlook, and I think it's really handy, is a magnifying glass. Uh, you got something in a watch you want to take a quick look at, you can just, you know. And this one uh, has a little magnifier that is, I don't know what it is, it's, it's a lot bigger than, than the main one. But for just taking a quick look at something, uh, uh, you know, this is not, this is a plastic one and it uh, didn't cost a lot, but it works great for, you know, just picking it up and looking at one thing or the other. And like, maybe you want to take a quick look at the, uh, how your, how your band fits with the lugs, something like that. Okay. So that's, uh, the first thing. Uh, the next thing that I think you need is gloves for one thing and um some kind of cloth uh, a cleaning cloth or a polishing cloth uh, your watches uh on everyday use and handling them and so forth and get pretty grungy and and you want them to look nice and shiny and uh you can get these just about anywhere uh the 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 kind of cloth they're a lint free cloth a lot of uh uh, this one right here is came with the um, Rolf Lang Dresden a picture of his watch, a little thing. I use them for promotional purposes, and uh, they're really handy to have. A, a lot of watches, most of them, I think, when you get a new watch, they come with a some kind of polishing cloth. But I but I think it's really important, and people overlook it uh, when you uh, photograph your watches, and that's some, that's sort of most collectors do. And then they share them on um, on the internet with each other. You want your watch to look good, and a polishing cloth will help keep it nice and and looking good, and keep all the grungy stuff off. The uh, the gloves, I happen to like black gloves, and the reason for that is that I was at the um, Patek Philippe Service Center in New York, and uh, there was this a uh, wonderful lady who was helping us and she had on a pair of white gloves <laughs> they were they get grungy looking really quickly so <laughs> black they sort of hide the evidence that i've been handling watches and you know why gloves well you're you're you have a lot of oil and greases and i don't know even perhaps some acids uh in your hands and you know, it helped keep the watch from getting fingerprinted up and sort of goofy looking. These will help, especially if you're talking about them a lot. 
I uh, perhaps don't use them as much as I used to, but I, I probably should do it more often. Um, the, the size of the cloth, uh, I, I got a uh, Vacheron Constantin uh, Hysterique's American 1921. It comes with a cloth, it's like the size of a beach towel, <laughs> like give you this huge cloth. Others are, are tiny, uh, even, uh, now these are lens paper, uh, for lens paper for glasses. Uh, you can use them too, but uh, I like the uh, soft, lint-free uh, cloth. If you wear gloves, once you get it all polished up and looking nice, it, uh, it pretty much stays that way. So, uh, it, it's probably something, and like I said, I got these on uh, Amazon, and uh, usually it'll be a cloth you can you can find one. <laughs> I guess you can get them on Amazon too, or a number of other places where they have um, where they have uh, watch supplies. I think for the for the collector, for the beginning collector, uh, the most important tool or tools, I should say, will be for your bands. Uh, this is something that you can actually do yourself. I mean, you can take your watch into a jeweler and buy a band from the jeweler. And, the uh, jeweler can take it off and put it back on again, or a watch repair store or something. But it's something I think that you might want to consider doing yourself. And the reason for that is, is that you can have a lot of different bands for the same watch. And so you end up with a, um, oh, I don't want to fashionista but I mean sometimes you have one band for let's say everyday use and then you have another band for fancy use and uh, what you do with this guy right here this is it's got two ends to it this has got a fork on one end and then it's got a little uh, pokey stick on the other end and what you do with this is that to to take off a, a band you use the fork in, and what you do, you go in here and you and you just push the spring bar in and then lift this out. And uh, one thing, a tip, always do this from the back because if you slip, you're going to scratch the back. And you don't want to scratch the front. You don't want to scratch the glass either. So, in using this. Now, when you put it in, you use what I, I'll call the pointy end and you point it and just put it, put the uh, spring bar, you slip it through here, you slip the, the spring bar through the, uh, the band, and then what you do is that you put one end of the spring bar here, and then you take the pointy end and you just push it in and then pull it down on it. Uh, but it's something that I think is, is, is really worth having. Now, if, if you, change bands a lot. I I usually, I, on this particular watch, this one has what's called a quick release uh, band on it, and there's a little release thing right there. And it also has, on the inside here, it's rubberized. This is rubberized gator. This is a perfect everyday kind of band for a watch because the the rubberized inside when it gets hot and sticky and so forth, instead of getting all over and uh, wrecking your band, it sort of takes takes it away. Now to change bands on this, all you have to do, I can't show you this, I can't go backwards, is that you simply use your, your thumbnail and you just push this in and it comes right off and then to push, put it back in again you just do the opposite. You, um, hang on, push this in here. Yeah. And you give it a wiggle to, to make sure it's on right. Anyway, it's a lot easier than using a uh, spring bore. Now, on <laughs> two of my very favorite watches, they have, these are screwed in and you need, uh, I've got pictured up there, you have a, you have a screwdriver, and usually you need two, one to hold it, and then the other one to unscrew it with, and it's a hassle. Uh, what I did is that I built this little device to hold it so that I could, um, 
use a screwdriver to run screw it. Now this is this is a punch. And what you do with this is you take the screw out and there's a bar uh, and with, once the screws are out you take this and just push the bar out and then put it back in again. And it's like I said this is something that I'd rather not do. I put these uh, I had a red band made for this particular watch that I wanted to use both for an everyday band as well as uh, as sort of something different. It sort of picked up the red in uh, some of the in uh, in the indexes. I thought it might look sort of interesting. Uh, but the thing is, as you can see how different it looks, uh, the band that it came with, um, let me see, was more this color. And so you can see how you can drastically change the look of a watch by changing the band. And so if you're going to be changing bands, you need to have the right tools. Um, don't, don't go cheap. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, this one is a Bergion. Let me see if I can get the number on here. It's a, it's called a, Bergeon, B-E-R-G-E-O-N, and it's a 3150. And this particular one is, is a good quality one. You don't want one that's going to break or rip up your uh, your good Gator band. The uh, like I said, it's um, you can get a the the kind of this is another one. It's got a quick release band. This also has a deployant. That's deployant, not deployment, okay? You can get a deployant class for it. Uh, the ones I like have these little things here and you just push it to release it. The reason for this is, is that it actually, with a deployant uh, band, you don't tear up your watch as much, uh, or your watch band, I mean, once you have it on there. And then to take it off, you just push like that and out it comes. There are different kinds of bands, or different types of deployment bands. I like this kind the best because just push and uh, some of the other ones get <laughs> a little messy. Uh, also too, you see up there, it's called a bracelet pin remover. If you've got a, oh, let's say you buy a, a Rolex. So most Rolexes have a, a metal bracelet. And you find out that it's a little too big for you, or a little too snug. We'll say it's a little too big. And so what you want to do is that you want to take out one of the links. And again, you might want to if you know if you got it from if it's used, you may not have got it from your uh, AD, but uh, that's that would be the normal place to go. Um, Another kind of band is a canvas band. Now these are great for field watches or sort of your, you know, you're doing something rough and tumble. Um, those are those are pretty good for that, I think. What you're going to find is that uh, leather bands and uh, gator bands, especially gator bands can be extremely expensive. Uh, for example, these guys uh, on this one, it's about 400 bucks a pop for a band. And this is with, comes with this uh, quick release band that seems to want a quick release a lot for me. Um, and the thing of it is, is, is that the, when you have a band like this, at least for me, I like to wear my watches, all my watches, a lot. And it, instead of having a $400 band, well, for these, the I, I do have for my uh, FP Jorns uh, because they have these rubberized. But I have other bands for this that I wear to special occasions. I have this one, it's a cornet color, and it just looks great. But it, it's, uh, and so I'll just take this one off and put that one on and it takes me five minutes to do it. But the thing of it is, is that it's always, it always looks brand new because this is the one that I wear uh, for everyday use. And like I said, it's got this rubberized size to it. So uh, one of the things that you can use is that I use something that's called um, Neat Foot Oil. And I, I got a big 32 ounce 
<laughs> bucket of it I keep out in my workshop. But what I get is that I got a little one of these, uh, I got an empty bottle, cleaned it out really well from a, uh, this is from a uh, travel size shampoo bottle. Uh, or you can use anything, you know, any little plastic bottle that has a good tight cap on it that you're not going to spill it with. Uh, this I like. Now, uh, another thing you can do, you, you can get one of these little uh, atomizers and you can put put it in here like this inside of here and then you can just spray the band with it on and I spray it on both sides now this band right here was is the original gator band that uh, came with the Ralph Lang Dresden watch and uh, I took it off because this has got a um, a little pin buckle here and the what happened was that um, I kept taking the band off because I like looking at the back. I mean, it's got it's got an exhibition window with this gorgeous movement in it. And I kept taking it off, and and I realized that you know this thing is uh, starting to get sort of worn out, and so I put the the neat foot oil on it to to give it more. Uh, flexibility because you don't want your your good bands to crack and they will if they dry out and so I use it on virtually all my bands another um yeah on all my bands another thing you can get these are called band liners they're a little like mole skin um little strips and what you do is you you simply attach them to the back of your band and if it gets hot and muggy and so forth, uh, this will protect the band from, you know, a lot of sweat and stuff that uh, you can you can have. Another thing that uh, we do when we collect watches is we take pictures of our watches. And, you know, you can just take your, um, your camera, your uh, phone camera, and take a shot of them. Or if you better, you know, have a fancy camera, you can do it with that too. Uh, one thing, though, I found uh, very useful is these uh, are these little um, they're light boxes, and essentially, what you do is you plug them in, and they have a little light inside. And this just goes into a USB port on your uh, computer. Let me pop this in real quickly here and there, and they and they light up, and what you can do is you can take, uh, put your watch in there. Uh, you can get some of these little stands and put it on there and put it in like I illustrated over there. Or you can just stick your arm in and you have a little sort of a, a light studio. And I like the small ones. I Initially, I got one of those big, uh, what are called tents. And the problem with the tent was that it was, way more than what I needed. I It just, <laughs> this great big old uh, thing, and it wasn't too helpful. Um, but you know, you might want a big one for some reason or another. And here in the back, you've got these little tabs, and what you can do is you can put in the, uh, this particular one comes with, um, it's called the uh, Polos, polos, one of the two. They got fancy with the fonts. It comes with a set of different colored backdrops. And so you can have, you know, like I said, you can have sort of your own little studio and you can pop it right on your desktop. And, and you can then take your pictures. You can stick your arm in there. Or you can put it up on a little stand or whatever you want with it. Now, the final tools that I want to talk about are ones uh, for beginning collectors that I would not recommend, okay? Not because they're not useful, but if you're collecting, collect, okay? If you take up watchmaking where you start taking the backs off and, and doing some things with them, then these may become useful. I say this because... Um, certain people <laughs> that I know when they first started their collection went ran out and got a, this is called a, um, a case knife, okay, and it's a special knife 
for pry and open cases. It's, uh, and this is the same thing, you pry it open by popping it down like that. Uh, here's a case with the kind of um, case back that you have to pry off. You you find a little, there's a usually a little, uh, either a tab or a, uh, a little uh, gouged out part of it and you slip this in here and pop it out. Uh, or you do the same thing with this, you pop it, pop it out. Now, illustrated there is, is one thing, if you have to get one or you have one already, that if you're, you can impress your friends so they, to change their battery in their uh, quartz watch. Uh, I've done that before. You pop open the back and you take out the old battery and you go down to the drugstore and get another one. And you can do the whole operation for a fraction of what they'll charge at the mall. They charge, I don't know, five, six, seven dollars at the mall just to change a battery. And the ones they put in there are not always the best batteries. So, you know, I guess if you, if you have one or you have to get one. By and large, though, just don't get a case knife. By the way, too, I saw these uh, guys in the mall with, they, they were selling uh, watch straps. And they would use case knives instead of spring bar tools to change it on. Just scared me to death. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Now, the other tool you may be tempted to get is a very, is a similar one. They have, it's one of these. And what you do is you adjust the length of these and then as you can see in the picture, you simply put it on and, and you screw off the back. Um, for beginning watchmaking, a lot of the uh, cases you're going to find are going to have this kind of case back. And I absolutely love those case backs for, uh, for watches, especially for the ones that I get that have an exhibition window. You can just screw these off with these things. But... If you have a, a watch otherwise, this is an illustration over here, uh, the back is screwed off. And, and actually, the way this particular watch has, you have a ring, and the inside of the ring, there's a little metal case back, and then you take it off, and, and, and there's the movement. Well, now, unless you're involved in, in watchmaking, there's really not a whole lot of reason to do that. Um, you may want to photograph the back to have a picture of your movement and so forth, and I suppose that's one reason. And uh, you're probably better off getting a stock picture of it from the uh, picture that they usually have with the manufacturer, the movement. But for the most part, leave the case closed. Uh, I think that uh, with some, and I'm pretty sure Virtually every Rolex has some kind of sealant, and if you go in there and monkey with it, and you could break the seal in such a way that it's no longer waterproof, and, and you don't want to do that. Just enjoy the collection, and I I do it. All of the watches, are my best watches, which is most of them to me, have an exhibition window in the back. You can you can just pick them up and take a look at it and uh, I've never had this case back off and I have no plans in doing so and uh, even with a, um, a movement like this that has that stupid rotor in the way uh, this one's got sort of a cool rotor uh, Christian Vanderclaw ro rotor is uh, 12 claws that uh, make up the um, rays of the Sun okay well this is an introduction for beginners and the tools I think they need. The most important tools is really how you use them. Uh, if, you, if you have uh, good leather or gaiter uh, straps, take good care of them. Uh, and if they start getting dried out or you live in an area where that's not too good for <laughs> gaiter straps, uh, get some of the uh, neat foot oil uh, get some of that and you rub the stuff in I rub it in with my fingers but like I showed you there's this you can get a little uh, you can get a little spray bottle and spray it on and you know you can do it that way but 
I like to rub it in and, and it, uh, the leather can absorb it and, you know, keep it nice and flexible. All right. Well, listen, uh, like I said, this is a, for a beginner's toolkit for collection. You have any ideas? I'd really like to hear them. And if you're a more experienced collector and like to say, hey, what about this? I think you ought to add that. I'd like to hear that too. And so until Sunday, we're going to have a, I think you're going to find an extremely interesting uh, collection review. This is Bill Sander for Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watts Collection.